Welcome to everyone who is joining us for the Pi Martins class book, which is the world's worst children. Today we're reading Miss Petulia Perpetual Motion, which I'm sure I'm going to say wrong a lot of times, and we'll see what antics she gets up to. This is the story of a girl who would not sit still. Miss Petulia Perpetual Motion was forever in motion. Whether she was in a lesson, in church, or even playing musical statues, some part of her would always be moving. It might be her foot, or her arm, or even her entire body. It would start with a little wiggle, then became a waggle, before turning into a jiggle and progressing to a joggle. Next, she would be cartwheeling across the room, creating pandemonium wherever she went. Petulia was even in motion as she slept. Sometimes the other girls at her posh boarding school, Modesty Place, would hear a noise in the dead of night. They would peek out from under their bed covers and see Petulia fully dancing across the dormitory with her eyes closed. One day, Petulia's rather grand headmistress announced that the girls of the Modesty Place were going to go on an awfully special trip. Quiet, girls, ordered the lady as she stood on the stage at assembly. Miss Prigg's grey hair was starred in a magnificent bouffant hairdo and a pair of half-moon spectacles hung from her neck on a gold chain. If she was about to tell someone off, which was often, she would, uh, the spectacles would be lifted up to her eyes so she could stare her victim down and give them the willies. Now, girls, we are going to take a school trip to somewhere I, your beloved headmistress, have chosen myself. We are going to visit my favourite porcelain museum. Needless to say, I expect you to be on your absolute best behaviour. I don't want any mishaps. Suddenly, all eyes were on Petunia. Oh no, thought the good girls sitting in the front row. Oh yes! thought the bad girl sitting in the back row. To make matters worse, or better, depending on whether you were a good or a bad girl, Petulia was bouncing up and down on her seat like it was a space hopper. Boing, 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 boing. Porcelain had long been a personal passion of mine, continued the headmistress, who loved making lengthy speeches. Now I, your beloved headmistress, want to share that passion with you. This museum is the best in Europe. Every single piece on display is a priceless antique. There shall be no accidents. Do I make myself clear? There was a faint murmur from the pupils. I said, do I make myself clear? She bellowed. Yes, headmistress, chimed the girls in unison. Excellent. Now, Miss Petulia, perpetual motion. I need to see you in my study right away. The girl glowed a red as a tomato driving a fire engine. What had she done wrong now? Surely the time when she accidentally spun backwards into the science block had been put behind her. Yes, the experiment taking place that day went badly wrong. Yes, there was still a huge hole in the floor where the acid burned through it. But Petulia swore it was an accident. Yes, her triple jump on sports day became an optual jump, taking it eight different moves, as resulted in Petulia karate kicking the local mayor, sending him tumbling off the winning podium. But again, the girl insisted it was an accident. And yes, of course, who could forget the time at the school Christmas carol concert where Petulia couldn't stand still in church, cartwheeled up the aisle and sent the vicar, vicar flying headfirst into the choir. But these were all accidents. It wasn't her fault she couldn't sit still. Petulia even had a note from her mother to approve it. To whom it may concern, my darling daughter, Miss Petulia Perpetual Motion, cannot stay still for more than a second. It is not her fault, so she must not be punished in any way if she causes damage to property, buildings, people or animals. Please take great care of my darling daughter. Yours truthfully, Petulia's mother. 
With some trepidation, the girl knocked on the door of the headmistress's study. Knock, knock, knock. Come, barked the headmistress from inside. Knock, 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 knock. But Julia's hand did not stop knocking. I said, come, came an angrier sounding voice. Still, Petulia couldn't stop her hand from knocking. Knock, 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 knock. Oh, for goodness sake, roared the headmistress. Miss Prig yanked open the door and Petulia, knock, knock, knocked the lady, slap bang on her nose. Boink. Ow. Uh, sorry, Miss Prig, replied the girl with a hint of a smile. It was amusing to see the lady fuming. Come into my study this instant, ordered the headmistress. Julia forward rolled into the room, which Miss Prig always had kept spotless. In fact, an old clear, clearer, cleaner was there that at that moment, busily polishing some school trophies on a table. You out, ordered the headmistress. Miss Prig was cut to anyone she considered below her. The cleaner picked up her dusters and shuffled towards the door. Quickly, shouted Miss Prig, the poor old dear picked up her pace until at last she disappeared. Now, take a seat, Miss Petula, perpetual motion, said the headmistress. Petula did just that. She took a seat and danced around the study with, study with it. I meant sit down, barked Miss Brig. The girl whisked and whirled the chair to the floor and slowly lowered herself to it. As soon as her bottom touched the chair, she felt an overwhelming urge to bounce up and down on it. So she did. Be still, demanded Miss Prig. But Petulia continued to bounce up and down, the chair squeaking along with Miss Prig with her bounces. Bounce, squeak, bounce, squeak, bounce, squeak. Now, needless to say, I want you to be on your absolute best behaviour during the school trip. Of course, Miss Prig, as if I wouldn't be anything else. Bounce, squeak, bounce, squeak, bounce, squeak. The headmistress was not convinced. She lifted her half-moon spectacles up to her eyes and studied the girl. The truth is, I have left a trail of destruction behind you wherever you've been at Modesty Place, which is the finest girls' boarding school in the country. I hardly need remind you of the incident in the school dining hall yesterday lunchtime. You began by juggling huge bowls of trifle, before long, they were zooming through the air, heading straight for the teacher's table. At least it saved you all the bother of queuing for dessert, headmistress, replied the little girl. If this was designed to stop Miss Brig from becoming further enraged, it failed miserably. I was covered from head to toe in trifle, boomed the headmistress, her face now boiling with fury, her teeth on the verge of gnashing. Only this morning I found a piece of jelly in my ear. Did you eat it, miss? inquired the girl politely. No, I did not eat it. Bounce, squeak, bounce, squeak, bounce, squeak. This noise was really distracting the headmistress now, but she pressed on. Then there was the time you caused chaos in your art class. You jiggled and wiggled, and before you knew it, there was paint sprayed across the walls, windows and ceiling. Our art teacher, Miss Splurge, remarked that she actually rather liked it in the, re in the redecoration. The headmistress chose to ignore the smarty pants reply. And the time when you managed to release all the lacrosse balls from the games cupboard, Miss Heff, your poor PE teacher, wobbled over and was carried off down the pitch on a sea of them. I do hope they eventually find her, remarked Miss Petulia. I do too, bellowed the headmistress. Bounce, squeak, bounce, squeak, bounce, squeak. Miss Prig couldn't take it a moment longer. Will you be still, she ordered. Sorry, miss, muttered the girl. For a moment, Petula was still, but the moment still soon passed. There was a wobble, then a wibble, ending up in a huge wobble. The girl performed a dive roll onto the floor before finishing her acrobats display with a handstand. Now, Miss Petulia motion, perpetual motion, purred Miss Prig with a new hint of menace in her voice. I need the trip to the porcelain museum to pass without incident or modesty place founded 1000 years ago by a nun nonetheless could be a laughing stock. Of course, miss, said 
the upside down girl, who was now scuttling around the headmistress's office on her hands like a performing poodle. So I have ordered Modest Modesty's Places science teacher, Professor Blink, to come up with a contraption to stop you causing any damage to the priceless antiques. Miss Petulia, perpetual motion, did not like the sound of this at all. I'll be fine without it, thank you, miss, she said. The girl's legs were now doing scissor kicks. As she spoke, her legs sent a pile of school reports flying off the headmistress's desk. They looked like a flock of seagulls taking flight. No, you will not, barked the headmistress. What is the contraption, miss? Oh, you'll see, said Miss, Miss Prig ominously, desperately trying to pluck the sheets of paper from the air. Now get out! With that, Petulia cartwheeled out of the study, booting the newly polished, polished trophies to the floor as she went, crash, a bang, a wallop. The day of the school trip arrived and Professor Blink proudly wheeled her invention out of the science block and into the playground. There we are, headmistress, said the lady, still sporting her white lab coat and safety goggles. Just as you asked. It's marvellous, Professor, replied Miss Prig. It looked like a giant toy for a hamster. The science teacher had created a huge, round, see-through, inflatable ball, large enough for someone to be placed inside. Of course, that someone was Miss Petulia Perpetual Motion. I am proud to finally unveil veil my invention, announced the professor. I have named it the Bouncing Boom Boom Ball. Is it destined to stop jiggling children all over the world from destroying everything in their paths? Keep it brief, ordered the headmistress. We only like the sound of her own voice. Yes, yes, headmistress, replied the science teacher hurriedly. It's very simple. The child who cannot stay still is stuffed in here, she began indicating a small hatch in the ball. Then, when the child does fidget, the bouncing boom boom ball will simply bounce off any precious object nearby, causing zero damage. At least that was the idea. Splendid, said the headmistress. You may go. It was a long coach ride to the porcelain museum. Despite the driver's protestations, the headmistress insisted that Petulia travel in the boot so, so she couldn't cause any damage on the way. As they arrived, the headmistress stuffed Petulia perpetual motion into the bouncing ball. 